Hi, I'm Alex and welcome back to my workshop. Today we're going to be looking at hardline tubing. I'm going to be going through some of the different varieties, how to prepare tubes, how to bend them and put them into your water cooling system. So the first variety that we're going to look at is PETG. PETG is an easier to bend alternative than acrylic and is very popular with people starting out with their loops and also trying to do maybe more complex loops in the future. It comes in two commonly available sizes, 16 millimeter and 12 or 13 millimeter, depending on the manufacturer you go with. The second material is acrylic tubing, which has been used since 2012. Like PETG, it comes in 16 millimeter and 12 millimeter, as well as 14 and 13 for different manufacturers. It's always important to make sure you go with exactly the same size as the fittings that you've chosen. It also comes in numerous finishes, such as polished, colored, and satin. PETG melts at a lower temperature and is softer. It's easier to bend, it's more appropriate for beginners, and it's very flexible. Acrylic, on the other hand, is clearer. It will reflect the light more, and it will actually give the color of the fluid a bit of a boost. The difference is it's much less shatter resistant, so you have to be more careful with it, and you can't use the same tools. So having a look at the tools, these are the ones that I would class as essential for bending tubes. You're going to need a heat gun, a cutting tool, a silicon insert, and a deburring tool. Optionally, to make bending angles uh, with precision easier, you can use mandrels, which are available in small and very, very, very large kits. To begin with, we're gonna have a look at PETG, how to prepare it, how to work it, and how to bend it into the shape that you want. So after first marking out the tube length that I want to cut, simply insert the tube, line it up with your mark and screw. Then you twist it, slowly pushing the handle in as you go. So fresh after cutting, you'll notice there are lots of burrs on the inside. We now need to remove those using a deburring tool. The easiest way to deburr it is first to damp the tip, insert the tool and twist. Keep the pressure quite light and let the twisting action do the work. We're now ready to make our first bends. To begin, you've got to use your heat gun and if you have temperature control, try to set it to around 130 degrees Celsius. If you can't set the temperature, make sure to keep rotating and spreading the heat, all this can happen. So before we begin bending, we're going to have to insert the silicon insert. The easiest way to do this, I've found, is to dampen it. But be sure to put in a little bit of soap first because this helps it to release. I've just used some dish soap. Hover the tube over the heat gun about three to four centimeters away from the tip. You'll want to rotate the tube and move it up and down so that you get nice even heat spread. When the tube has reached temperature, remove from the heat and we're ready to bend it. Simply very carefully move it into shape. It's important to remember that this tube is going to remain soft for a while, so you'll want to hold it in place. Optionally, you can always cool it down with a little splash of water. With the tube now cooled, we can safely remove the insert. This can sometimes need a little bit of a tug, but the soap should help it come out easily. The final step is to trim your piece of tubing to size. Remember to deburr both the inside and the outside this time, because we're going to be inserting this tube into the fittings now. Alternatively, you can use one of these style deburring tools. I find them particularly useful for harder tubes such as metal and acrylic, but they work on PETG also. Moving on to acrylic, it's largely the same process as PETG, only it's very, very important to make sure that you do take into account that it is not shatter resistant at all. So you cannot use cutting tools such as this pipe cutter here. So instead you're going to want to use saw based cutting methods such as a jigsaw, a dremel or a coping saw. Like with PETG, you'll want to mark off the piece of tubing that you're going to cut. I'm using masking tape here because it will prevent scratches from occurring from the saw. I'm going to be using a coping saw to cut this piece of tube. For deburring the acrylic, it's quite a good idea instead of using a tool to just use some sandpaper because you can get a very clean bevel around the edge and it won't chip. It's largely the same process as PETG, but acrylic has a far higher melting point. So you have to be very careful to make sure that the heat is very even and spread along the length of the tube. Otherwise you'll get a lot of kinks in your bends. This time I'm going to be using a bending mandrel to help me achieve a specific angle. 
Once the tube is soft and pliable, remove it from the heat and then carefully bend it around the mandrel and hold it in place until cooled. Again, you can use a splash of water to help quicken this process. Well, that covers the basics of bending PTG and acrylic tubing. In another episode, we're going to be looking at more exotic materials such as chrome-plated brass, carbon fiber, and glass tubing.